Okay, so a bit of a quickie here. Are we going to make this a quick video? I'm not really too sure. But either way, we have ourselves a pretty significant update on the Kiro Kaprizov Minnesota Wild contract negotiations front. Because Michael Russo, Minnesota Wild insider and analyst, went over onto Twitter the other day and he made a tweet that kind of contradicts the entire narrative that we have been seeing get built up with Kirill Kaprizov the past few weeks. Let's take a look at this tweet over here. It says, A contract does not sound imminent, which in itself is not a good thing, but hey, there is indeed good news still on Kaprizov and the contract talks with the Wild. There have been a lot of conversations lately between the Wild and the Calder Trophy winner, and... This is the big one right here. CSKA Moscow has publicly stated that Kirill Kaprizov is not playing there this season. Now, my immediate instinct when I saw this tweet pop up was, okay, what the hell? CSKA themselves publicly stated, which refers to probably the media or somewhere on the social media side of things, they said somewhere that Kirill Kaprizov is not going to play with their team. My immediate instinct was, okay, Frank Saravelli, buddy, what's going on here? What's going on? If you go over to the Frank Saravelli entire Twitter thread, which started this big mess, the entire KHL scare and Kaprizov and all that stuff, that Kaprizov has a tentative agreement in place with CSKA Moscow, my entire question is, what the hell happened here? Frank Saravelli is in a position where he built up so much credibility because he pretty much exposed and leaked the entire Seattle Kraken expansion draft before the draft even began. Like, I think it was like eight hours before the draft began, we had the entire set of picks that were leaked. In fact, everything is prone to getting leaked nowadays, even with like the gosh darn movies. You saw Spider-Man No Way Home, the Tobey Maguire Hasbro toys apparently being sold at Target, which is pretty interesting in my opinion because I am indeed a very big toy collector, so that piqued my interest. But, you know, I just kind of wanted an excuse to talk about Spider-Man here. But either way, things get leaked all the time, especially in this day and age. So for Frank Saravelli, the guy who leaked the entire expansion draft to come out with this tweet a few weeks ago, it really got everybody kind of just jumbled up in their thoughts because it's like, okay, Kirill Kaprizov might not play in the NHL next season, and now we're hearing the complete opposite, that CSKA is like, yeah, no, he's not playing with us. What are you, what are, what are you talking about? There's no reason for you to believe that he's going to come over here. We're not going to have him as a part of our team next year. And you know, there are indeed a lot of really good supporting reasons as to why that would have likely been the case. Pretty much the biggest one is the salary cap in the KHL, because we did note that there would be an eight-figure deal, quote-unquote, according to the Saravelli tweet, in US dollars if Kaprizov went over to CSKA Moscow for one season. Eight figures, minimum of that is $10 million. The KHL salary cap is like, what, $12 million US? and the highest paid KHL players are making 1.4-ish million dollars a season in US dollars if you convert it over from ruples. So right away from the very beginning, we even had our doubts because the KHL and their monetary status, just the way they distribute economics to players, it's not really the same cut and paste kind of, oh, if you're a good player in the NHL, you'll get a $7 million AAV contract here, you'll get an $8 million USD AAV contract over there, because it just doesn't work like that. So a lot of people, myself included, were already super confused with the entire monetary side of things when we heard that Kaprizov had a tentative deal in place with CSKA Moscow. And so now, hearing from Michael Russo, a Minnesota Wild insider, that apparently CSKA is like, no, we're not going to have this guy on our team. What are you talking about here? There are a number of reasons as to why that makes a whole bunch of sense to me. And besides, we even had the Russian media outlets the other week as well talking about how this was cap, and they were like, yeah, no, this is a bluff. This is the biggest bluff in sports history, something like that. It was some hyperbole statement that they made. I forgot what it was specifically, but either or, the fact is, if we're having Kirill Kaprizov in this position where contract talks are going a lot better now than they appear to have been before, Michael Russo, man, he's the guy with the scoop. We also did have ourselves the word earlier in the offseason that apparently the Kirill Kaprizov camp did not receive any offers from the Wild since, like, April? That's what the Frank Saravelli tweet in this little thread here all the way back those few days ago said. And, you know, if there are contract negotiations going well today, that's what Russo says, good news, there's been a lot of conversation lately, then 
I would have to assume that they might have had some more offers on the table rather than the ones that were given out in, well, in April. So, everybody's biggest fear here, talking about Kaprizov and the potential of the Calder winner going over to a different hockey league for 2021-2022, apparently that is not going to happen, or at least it is a lot less likely to happen now than it was, let's just say, a few weeks ago, or at least compared to how we believed it was going to be a few weeks ago. Let's go over onto one more thing over here before we end off this video. This was a really interesting thing that I saw here on Our Hockey, talking about Kiro Kaprizov and reigning Calder Trophy winners. Take a look at this post right here. I'm not going to read the user's username because that's kind of explicit there. Has a reigning Calder Trophy winner ever not played in the NHL the following season? Everything going on with Kaprizov has got me wondering. Some of the comments over here have some really interesting stories. It sure looked like Tyler Myers took the next season off, which is a pretty funny joke, especially for me because I'm a Canucks fan and Tyler Myers plays for the Canucks now. Take a look at this comment over here from Loves His Bong. Gay Stewart in the 1942-1943 season won the Calder Trophy. The next season, he did not play in the NHL because he got drafted into the Canadian Navy. He is also the first player in NHL history to win a Stanley Cup before winning the Calder Trophy, and he also beat none other than Maurice Rocket Richard for the Calder Trophy as well. So, there you go. There's one of the names right there, all the way back in the 40s, to go out there, win the Calder Trophy, and then not do anything in the National Hockey League after that. You can see it right here on Wikipedia. He won the Calder Trophy in 1942-1943, where for the Toronto Maple Leafs, he had 24 goals, 23 assists for 47 total points in 48 games played in the National Hockey League. And then the next season, hey, guess what? He's in the Navy. He's playing for the Montreal Royals, the Montreal Navy. This is like the Quebec Senior Hockey League and all that. It's not the NHL. So he is a prime example there of a Calder winner not playing in the National Hockey League next year, except, you know, the circumstances here are a little bit different. It's not like Kirill Kaprizov is going to get drafted into the Russian army or whatever. You also have another player here, Britt Selby, who won the Calder Trophy in 1965-1966, but he was then sent down to the minors six games into the next season, and he did not play another game with the Toronto Maple Leafs that year. So we do have a few interesting scenarios where guys who win the Calder Trophy do not become full-time National Hockey League athletes the next season, especially to the standard that they would have set for themselves when they won the Calder Trophy the year before. For Kaprizov, it's a completely different ballgame here. No Navy, no AHL, it's NHL or bust, or at least that's what it appears to be. And just according to the contract negotiation updates we have had from guys like Michael Russo in the media who are doing a fantastic job, by the way, getting the scoops, learning the information, and letting us public people know how exactly things are going on on the inside. So for Kirill Kaprizov, if CSKA Moscow is coming out here and saying, yeah, he's not going to play for us, there are a ton of reasons why it makes sense to me why that would be the case. Money doesn't really work the same way in the KHL as it would have in Frank Saravelli's tweet over here. You can't really just give out $10 million for one year for one KHL guy because the KHL salary cap doesn't really work that way. It's not as big as the NHL salary cap is. And with conversations continuing between Kaprizov and the Minnesota Wild camp, and having them going as well as it appears to be going, I think Wild fans have a lot less to worry about today than they had a few days ago. So talk to me in the comments, what do you think about Kirill Kaprizov, the entire update here with the contract, CSKA saying no, and the negotiations apparently going well too. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls and I and bye.